we've just seen an old friend that's returned, haven't we? Yes. It's the Crosby Fairway, Fairway Boys. Boy. Um, it disappeared it, a couple of years back. Uh, yeah, or if we think it is because of dredging, um, they've removed it. But uh, it has finally returned. And we're heartily glad to see it because it marks the radio recording in point, or one of them in any rate. Yeah, because as you uh, go up and down the channel, you must report in. Beverly's going to report in in a minute. Yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's an old friend and it has returned. Alright, I'll go do the reporting in thing. We've decided that the boat that's passing is supposed to be an absolute genius of a boat. It's called the Einstein. Unusual name, but there you have it. <laughs> Well, we're we are sailing, but I think drifting is a more accurate uh, phrase. We're doing two knots. Yeah, that's why I think we're just drifting with the. Uh, I think 1.7 of that's the tide. Yeah, I think we're just drifting with the tide. But I love the silence, as you know. I love being quiet. You love being investigated by helicopters flying directly at us. Oh, earlier we had a drone follow us. Yeah. Uh, so I just hope it's a subscriber because. <laughs> be nice to see it, wouldn't we? It'd be nice to see that bit of footage, but mm -hmm. it's doubtful. So what's for dinner? Our first dinner at sea in quite a while. Oh, just um, chicken uh, fajitas. So uh, bits of chicken, onions, and all sorts of stuff. Mm. With a bit of fajita around, uh, not fajita, a um, pita bread around it. So mm. really good. But um, that Coast Guard helicopter is getting closer. Yeah. Have we anything illegal aboard? Not as far as I know. Vitamin C is about as dangerous as it gets. Penguin? Yeah, well, that's a different story. Venerably flying here on Salty Lass. Um... We were only doing, we were doing about two knots, mainly drifting on the tide. And then Beverly sort of said, I have high hopes for that ruffled water out there. <laughs> and uh, as soon as we um, went from smooth water to this sli stuff. slightly ruffled, um, the wind um, basically just started making the salty Well, the wind went from 7 knots to 20. <laughs> and we're now doing 6.8 knots. Which, uh, as far as Beverly and I are concerned, is absolutely fantastic. a bit because uh, we were in seven, seven and a half knots uh, which is above the boat's theoretical hull speed so we're probably doing a bit of sideways uh, as well as going forward. Um, the wind's still staying quite fresh we're doing um, seven knots at the minute and um, sunsets in about half an hour and this is a bit too much to be doing overnight so what we'll do is we'll shorten sail in a bit and um, 
put to Reese and Jenny to in the main and that'll do for overnight. It'll let us uh, make way and we shouldn't get bashed around. I think um, if you had uh, more crew, I think um, you could um, keep this sail configuration all through the night. Probably. But when it's just two people, shortening sails is definitely the right move. And I think we're going to hoist a bit more of our Jenny on the um, Jenny halyard. Yes, okay, yeah, I would agree with you. Yeah, because we obviously haven't got it set quite right after Liverpool. Yeah. But we need a calm day for that. This is not the time. <laughs> and we're not doing it now. <laughs> no, not a chance. Uh, oh, things have calmed down. We're doing six and a half knots. Whoa! <laughs> but the good thing is, if we need to speed up, I can pull in the... Uh, pull in the main, yeah. Pull in the main and that just uh, do my Moana <laughs> and accelerate. Pull the accelerator. Yeah. Good morning. Um, I'm... Oh, that's definitely morning. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Yes, I'm bright and breezy, and Beverly's like, Ugh. but that is mainly because um, I've just done a shift where Beverly was asleep for a couple of hours. Um, but I had my sleep earlier. But um, while I was on my shift, I had a couple of issues. First came from a large vessel, and um, of course was going to go across its um, bow, and of course that is not the right thing to do. Um, so it was a, a commercial vessel, so I looked it up on AIS, and it was anchored. So it was fine to go across its bow, but otherwise I was thinking, oh, I've got to do this to make sure I was going across its stern, which is the right thing to do. And then the next thing that happened was um, I was looking at Douglas, which is where we're going, and uh, I thought, oh, that's a really nice uh, lighthouse sort of thing. Uh, turned away for a new minute, few minutes, and then realised it was a rather nice sail <laughs> on a sailboat. Seen and done. Basically, yeah, so it was a bit daft uh, there. And the latest morning, as it was just going past us, the high speed ferry from Douglas to uh, Liverpool. It does about 30 knots and it throws a huge piece of uh, wake in its trail. And although it's a mile and a half away, or it was when it passed us, it's way down there now, um, that'll be nasty when that wave hits us. One got us last night and it really threw us around, didn't it? It did. Um, the second one. Because we did quite had a, quite a few of those, we actually realised what we were doing beforehand. So what we did was we brought the sail in. Um, the first one nearly ripped the traveller out. Right? The first one nearly, yeah, exactly, nearly ripped the trim Because we just weren't prepared for it. Yeah. Well, anyway, Douglas in an hour. Sounds like that. Oh, I'm looking forward to it.
Ted Douglas at the moment and we are on the waiting pontoon. Now the waiting pontoon is roughly half price of the, um, the harbour. So for our length boat it's working out at £17 for the night. Um, just if you are going to come into the waiting pontoon though, uh, do put your fenders high because the um, pontoon is quite high. Another good thing about uh, coming here to Douglas is we've just been invited over to the RNLI station, which is just over there. So that comes what? out, and I'm not going to hit it, but it's literally just a tap with a hammer there. That gate moves, that piece opens up, and that allows the strop to run freely through the ruffle hole in the gate. And at that point, the lifeboat's on its way. Don't you dare launch it! <laughs> This particular one came to us from Bridlington um, about three years ago. So it was named after Sir William Hillary, the founder of the RNLI, as Douglas was actually the birthplace of the RNLI, and he lived in a property just around the corner from us here. Oh, lovely. What a great history. You know, we're in station number one. Um, we, we, we refer to it as the founder station because Sir William was actually a member of the Douglas crew. There were lifeboat stations around the British Isles on the coastline, but it was his idea that it should all come together as, as one organisation. Oh, I see. So he actually, the founding was the, um, the joining up of everything to, together. Right, so it's, so it's so like it's a bigger, the, uh, an umbrella organisation of individual yes, yes. initiatives. And yeah, the, we're not number one station, but we, we call ourselves the founders station. Well, I think you're perfectly entitled to. Yes. <laughs> and of course, we do have a little facial bust up there. We've got a plaque on the outside. There is a, there's a life-size statue upon Douglas' head, which is obviously a windswept area, so he's in this big overcoat with his hair flowing. And he's actually buried in the graveyard about two miles away from here with his wife. The, the pair of them are interned together up there. And we hold a ceremony every January because his birthday was actually within two days of his, uh, the day that he passed. So every year, all the crew and the co local coast guards, um, police and the services come together for a service of memorial up in St George's Church. What a lovely idea. 